Welcome back to Danny's Den. So today, my video is going to be about dating PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome disorder, when it comes to dating. Um, I tried to YouTube it. I didn't really come up with a lot of videos that were coming from the direction I was coming from. Is it a thing? Personally, for me, it is. I feel like people who go through things in life can suffer from anything traumatically after the situation is over and said. And honestly, for me, I feel like dating is one of those things. So if you're like me and you've gone through a tough interaction with, and that could be abusive, verbal, mental, physical, it could just be like sexual experiences that you've had with people you were raped or molested or just handled a certain way and things of that nature so that's what i'm going to talk about today so if you guys are interested in hearing what you know how i feel about that and things i feel like i go through with that um stay tuned so recently i have jumped back into the dating pool um and i'm feeling somebody like <laughs> ain't feeling me what I'm noticing now that I am fully trying to immerse myself back into the dating pool and to be like about one person, maybe I am trauma tired. No, like in real life, I'm noticing dealing with him, I have triggers and I didn't understand it at first. So me and this guy, we are still in like the talk stage. We're not exclusive or anything. We're still in the talk stage, but my attention, like I find myself not really wanting to entertain other guys, not really wanting to kick it with other people. Like I just want to focus my energy on you. I want to see where this goes, you know what I'm saying? And from our interaction, it's like a mutual thing. My trigger so far, and I feel bad, and I'm gonna just say this now, it's not him. He's like a really good guy, he's decent. Like. <laughs> don't mess this up <laughs> that's all i keep saying to myself but no like seriously he um like one one thing i noticed that was a trigger for me that kind of like caused me to <gasps> jump off the deep end a little bit was we were talking and it was a consistent conversation and then it was like a deep conversation through text and um he didn't respond and normally i'm like okay let me go find somebody else's sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm, I haven't been invested in anyone in a very long time. I haven't had feelings for someone in years to the point where, like, I actually like you. No, it's like I really i am starting to get a little bit of feeling for you. So, why well, you not responding? And I don't want to be that girl. I don't want to be the chick who's like, It's been 30 minutes. I called you. I text you. I know you're at your phone. Why you not like, responding? That's not what I'm about. I'm not that person in this instance when it happened and we weren't even talking about deep deep stuff it was just like deep conversation like personal stuff but it wasn't like i'm pregnant by you no it wasn't nothing crazy but it's just like oh, i scared him off i always do this to myself I, da, 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 da. like i just started self doubting myself and it was just like get a grip get a mother flipping grip all right what's wrong with you why are you acting like this you know what i'm saying like i had to check myself and i didn't fully check myself until i was talking to my male best friend and he was just like see this is what i'm talking about girls always going off the hinges and i'm defending us women because i'm like no we not because i know what i know and i subscribe and, I know this. and i'm just like wilding mind you i ain't said nothing to the dude since my last text to him but i'm over here all like this guy forgot about me like just Tripping, right? Tripping. So maybe an hour, hour and a half goes by and conversation picks right back up with me. And I had to sit back and was like, you really just bugged out because you thought you scared him off and you wanted to think and figure out how you could fix this and how you could turn it around. That's not your place. Um, for one, it's a constant reminder to tell myself that I'm enough. Like, I'm an F, you know, whatever it may be, however it may be, whatever you see, whatever you feel, you're enough and it's okay to feel how you feel and process that. Don't hold on to that. Don't simmer in it. Don't let it simmer in you. Process it. And um, that's like, that's a trigger for me, I'm noticing. 
not feeling enough when I'm not getting consistent feedback. But he's consistent. So why are you tripping? It was just like a game my mind was playing back and forth with me. And he wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, another trigger is repetitiveness. Saying we want to do something and it doesn't happen. That's a trigger for me because it starts to build up from past situations. I thought I had let go. I don't know if these triggers are situations I haven't let go or I dealt with wrong. But when you keep telling me we want to do something and it doesn't happen, I don't get angry. I, it, it, it becomes a sense of, I don't trust you. You're just talking to me. I don't trust you. You don't want to be bothered with me. And not a, a you don't want to be bothered with me because you don't like me, but you don't want to be bothered. Like if you said it's going to be happening and it's not happening, then you don't want to be bothered. Chill out. Okay. Let's reel it on in. I feel like I'm a very confident person. I feel like I carry myself the best way I can for myself. I feel like I always speak about things that are crossing my mind and on my mind and how I feel so I don't bottle those things up and I don't get stuck in my head. But I also have anxiety triggers. Like he wanted to just chill in his house and instantly my mind was like, Oh my God, what if he tries to lock me in his house? Oh my God, what if he tries to do something to me? He's bigger than me, he might be stronger than me. Oh my God, what if somebody comes over and tries to do something to him and I'm there and what if something happens in his building or what if something happens? Like, y'all, I... It's crazy because he does not make me feel afraid. He makes me feel very secure in myself. He allows me to be myself and I'm very comfortable with him. Like I'm very comfortable with him. So to even feel or have that like thought process, just it baffled me and I started crying. Not that he was aware, but I started crying. And it was just like, you're like, chill out. You're okay. You know what I'm saying? I have to keep reassuring myself that I'm okay because in the past, I wasn't. I wasn't putting myself in situations that were smart. I wasn't putting myself in situations where I actually thought someone was going to harm me and then they did harm me. I wasn't thinking I couldn't trust you until I couldn't trust you and by then it was too late not to trust you. I couldn't, like it's so many things I've gone through and I've shared with people. And so many people made me feel like you know, it happens. Nothing validated my feelings except for me expressing them. I gave life to the situations by talking to them instead of keeping them hidden. You know what I'm saying? And he and I haven't had a conversation about my past when it comes to dating. He understands that, you know, I want to take things slow. Not at a snow's pace, but I just, I want to take my time. And this is exactly how I said to him. I was like, I've been in situations before meeting guys and chilling with guys and just with men in general that could have killed me you know what i'm saying i could have died i could have been anything could have happened to me so when it comes to you i want to take it slow i don't want to rush and go on a million dates if i'm not feeling comfortable i don't want to rush and come over your house if i'm not feeling comfortable i don't want to talk to you on the phone if my mind just my mind can't grasp certain things, you know what I'm saying? After I had like a mini breakdown, it took me about an hour to respond to the text because I'm just trying to get my mind out of, he's not gonna hurt you, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to think everyone's out to get you. You don't have to keep up fighting, like you don't, you're not, you're okay. Matter of fact, in that moment, you're okay. You're in the safety of your home, you're in your privacy, you're in your room, you're chilling. You're okay, you don't have to have a breakdown and it freaked me out more because I had an anxiety attack about it. And I was like, whoa. Before, it never bothered me to go hang out with somebody at their house. Whoa. So, um, as I thought about doing this video, I did a little research, like I said, on YouTube. And I didn't really see anything, but there was a guy talking about women who were sexually traumatized. And when it comes to dating and being handled by a man, and stated that um, you can't blame your new partner.
Like you can't place that blame on them, which I 1000% agree. And one thing I've witnessed around me is that people don't communicate. I've been through something. I'm not ashamed of anything I've ever gone through. So when the time does come and he's ready to hear it and I'm ready to tell him, yeah, I can tell him. But I want you to understand, be patient with me and understand that this isn't me pushing you away. This is me trying to get closer and this is me trying to peel off layers I didn't really know I was suffering and suffocating from, you know what I'm saying? like. Take a sigh of relief, okay? Take a sigh of relief. The world is not ending, although it may feel like it. And I feel very secure in myself. And that was the first time that had ever happened. So from f going forward, I'm going to continue to be vocal to him, whether this goes far or, you know, not. I see a future with him in a sense. I know. Crazy, right? <laughs> But um, yeah, I just, for anybody who's going through dating PTSD, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people talk about, I went through this and now I'm just so in love. No one talks about that, that, that transitional part. How did you go from horrible, depressed to extremely happy and in love? We're, what happened in here? Talk, what happened in here? What'd you do? What happened, sis? What's this here? What's the tea? I need to know. So that's where I'm at. I'm in limbo. Like, I'm not depressed. I'm not mad. I'm not sad. But I'm realizing I have triggers when it comes to dating or when I'm investing myself into someone. And it's new for me, you know? I don't know anybody else around me who's been through this. I haven't really heard anyone talk about it. And it may not even be a thing for anyone but me. But I wanted to share with you all my experience. Like, I made my YouTube specifically to like help me grow you know what i'm saying help me realize the error in my ways because a lot of people agree with some of the things i do and say and i'm not perfect i know i'm that i'm not nowhere near perfect so that's all y'all like i'll keep y'all updated on what's going on with him or whatever or if anything else triggers me like Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have been through anything i've talked about if you guys have any advice for me any um anything like thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to comment down below in the room follow me on all social platforms that i am on i'm on twitter tease my pearl I for nothing i'm on instagram she's a brand or you can follow my business page at coco velvet um check out my boutique as well cocovelvet.com i have women's fashion men's fashion and accessories i also have a kids lip gloss line at glam doll xo that big cartel.com y'all we all about our money trying to get it popping i also do lip gloss parties so get at your girl get at your girl she's all about a coin okay and don't forget to smile